Hello everyone, this is Bob Brown with Community Coronavirus Update number 92. We'll talk about the effectiveness of masks in school and then deciding on the boosters for Pfizer versus Moderna versus J&J, which is uh, proving to be a really challenging discussion. Uh, so we'll kind of go into it. So first, uh, get a local update. Lancaster County, we've had uh, three weeks of declining cases, which I think is uh, in large part due to our mask uh, ordinance and mask requirements in our schools. Uh, it was announced yesterday that our mask ordinance will be extended for another month, which I think is the right case. We need to get down to that uh, yellowish uh, range, I think, before we uh, get out of our mask ordinance. And hopefully, if another few weeks, we'll take care of that. Um, hospitalization rates in Lincoln, uh, basically, you can see uh, there's two lines here. Uh, the blue line, uh, this is the hospitalizations of people who are from Lincoln. Uh, however, this difference, this is the people who are hospitalized from outside of Lincoln. And so, uh, basically, I think it's showing, again, the effectiveness of our mask ordinance and masks in schools. We're having a big drop in the, in the hospitalizations of Lincolnites, which is opening up a lot of capacity to take the hospitalizations from the people around us that are living in areas where are much higher risk, higher spread settings. And again, it's, I think sort of confirming that, that our decision to wear, wear masks was the right thing, whereas unfortunately you're getting a lot more spread out in the rest of the state and that's required, uh, causing the hospitalizations and the deaths. Uh, I like this New York Times visualization because it looks at both a combination of uh, uh, case rates and test positivity because sometimes if you're looking at simply at case rates uh, they're falsely low because there isn't a lot of testing happening and so I think this is a better view of what the actual risk is likely to be uh, and Ted's trying to work on a, on, a, on, our, on our Tableau site to get something closer to this uh, now that the state website's up uh, and live again and, and, and submitting data. Uh, the other thing is we had two good studies uh, coming out from the CDC Friday last week, basically confirming the, the effect of cat masks in schools. So first, this uh, study of 999 schools with different uh, mask requirements, essentially showing that a school that does not have masks has 3.7 times uh, higher rates of outbreaks than those who do have masks. And so again, confirming the effectiveness of masks in school. And then even showing a community level effects. So here's pediatric COVID cases in counties with and without school mask requirements, uh, showing that there was a very large difference uh, in the amount of pediatric outbreaks uh, based on whether uh, schools had masks or not. Uh, this visualization is busier than it should be, but essentially if you look here at the first uh, two bars. This is kids, this is schools with masks, this is schools without masks, and then go to the end uh, three weeks later, this is schools with masks, this is schools without masks, and you see a huge increase in the amount of uh, outbreaks in when schools don't have masks. So again, uh, and this is important because CDC, uh, the, the data does confirm that COVID is worse than influenza. On the first three weeks of September, we've had 70 more pediatric deaths already. Uh, they'll update the, this last week's data later today, uh, but basically it will be well over 500 when we update this, uh, this slide next month. And so the number of, so although COVID rate, uh, risks overall for children are fairly low, they're still worse than influenza, however. Um, here in Lincoln, we did have, uh, Brian does have a, ho did have a hospitalization again for a kid. Uh, you'll notice if you look at the age distribution of who's being uh, into the hospital, almost all the people that are vaccinated in the hospital are a few people are older with health conditions. So it's very unusual for anybody uh, to be hospitalized uh, who's relatively healthy if they've been vaccinated. Uh, I asked uh, the folks at Brian Health how, how many of these 81 uh, the 81 people they've had in the hospital that are vaccinated had J Johnson & Johnson, only one so far. Keep in mind though, that's the, the people who got Johnson & Johnson are relatively younger, healthier patient because they were in the second wave after the, the people who are older and sicker. So it uh, doesn't necessarily say that Johnson & Johnson is worse or better. However, if you are one of those people who's relatively healthy in Johnson & Johnson, I think it gives you some uh, comfort that as long as you're wearing a mask, you're pretty well protected at this point. And I'll go into that in just a little bit more later. So another thing to keep in mind is that the hospitalizations of children aren't just from the acute effects of COVID. There's also uh, something called multi-inflammatory system in children, which is also a problem. And this happens about four to six weeks later, actually. And so they are also attracting rate uh, numbers of hot MISC hospitalizations in children. Uh, graphically, the way this looks out is that what you'll see is that the peak of, of cases the, cake, the peak of hospitalizations from MISC tends to follow by about a month or so. So the fact that we've had all these increased cases, we're gonna start seeing the MISC cases probably in the next few weeks. So October will tell us you know, how bad that's gonna be. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that the, the group of, of children that is most at risk for MISC, six to 11 year olds, is the very group that's waiting to see if they can get vaccinated or not. So I think again, a reason uh, why to do our, do our best to suppress spread in the community until we know whether we're gonna have a vaccine available for those kids. Uh, Pfizer has put that data uh, to the C to, to the FDA, so hopefully we'll find out uh, uh, in the near future. We're hoping that they have some answer on that within uh, hopefully by Halloween. 
Um, essentially, Pfizer did do a smaller dose instead of a 30 microgram. It's a 10 microgram dose. Uh, so the data is submitted and now it's under review. So hopefully we'll be hearing something uh, in the next uh, three or four weeks on that. Um, some good visualizations from the state that were pushed out uh, just uh, this past week, which I think are very helpful, basically showing that uh, people who were fully vaccinated were six times less likely to be hospitalized for COVID than those who weren't vaccinated. Uh, so it's good having statewide data confirming this as well. Uh, and basically since you know the start of January of the people who are infected, 92% are not vaccinated, 94% of the hospitalizations are not vaccinated, and 95% of the deaths are not vaccinated. So again, confirming these vaccines work, and the single biggest thing we needed to focus on is getting people vaccinated. However, the big question is about boosters, and so uh, uh, there is some confusion out there, and honestly, it's just because it's complicated. It's not that anybody's making a mistake. It's just unfortunately that we're in a sort of a, a gray area where the data is just coming in, so it's really hard to make clear uh, decisions. And I actually think Rochelle Walensky was right. Uh, she has gone up out just a little bit ahead of the data, but this is just a tough situation, and I, I was surprised that Wall Street Journal actually came out and, and, and uh, uh, gave her kudos for that. I think she did make the right decision. Uh, it's kind of like I've been saying the last few weeks that Colin Powell 4070 rule. Sometimes you just got to make a decision before all the data is in. Yes, it's a risk, but that's just what you got to do in a leadership position. And I think she is making the right call. Only history will tell, but you know, given the information you have, it's good enough. Uh, and again, uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Navi's uh, situa it's emergency situation, sometimes you just have, to get, just have to go with might help, won't hurt, worth pursuing type mentality. So if you want, I've linked to, to the full discussion. You can listen to the whole clinical web, webinar put out yesterday by the CDC, walk through all the slides. And, and sometimes it's easier just to review the slides yourself because you can read faster than they can talk. But there's over 90 slides all kind of going through all the data. It's complicated. Uh, so they kind of walk through each one. You know, Pfizer was more straightforward, and that's why the decision was made. And I like the way they've de defined, de divided into the should versus may. Uh, I think there is enough evidence that if you're older than 65 uh, or in a long-term care setting or 50 to 60 worth underlying health condition that you should get the Pfizer vaccine. It's not, I mean, I don't think it should be required, but I think you should get it. It, it make the data is good enough that I would do it if I were in this position. Now, the second question though is who might receive it and essentially people in a high risk occupation. So which could be, for example, healthcare or a, a teacher, for example, uh, given that there does seem to be some waning of immunity at six-ish months, uh, I think they should be able to receive it if they wanna go ahead and proceed. However, I don't think they have to either though. So this is a sort of a, 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 a should and a may, and I think this is actually the better uh, way to go about it, even though it's a little nuanced and a little more complicated. Um, Kind of going along that, well, what's the risk to getting a third dose? Well, there, there are side effects to the third dose. Uh, the, for Pfizer, they seem to be less uh, than the second dose, actually, for any of these uh, 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 side effects, although still the, the overall it's probably about the same. So if you're going to get your third dose, you kind of have to plan for the possibility you might not be able to work the next day. And so still that's a challenge. Uh, maybe if we had better uh, data on, on partial doses for that shirt shot, that would help. And that, I think, comes up a little bit with Moderna, actually. Um, so, but what about Moderna and J&J? &J? Well, what about uh, the rest of us? Because we're kind of left hanging out there. I had Moderna and I know a lot of teachers had J&J. &J. Uh, we're just kind of stuck in a gray area. Uh, and I like uh, this uh, CDC comment um, from uh, uh, Rochelle Walensky is walk, don't run. Meaning, you know, it, it's not an urgent thing. You can wait a little bit. Um, so just hang out and wait unless there's something pushing you one way or the other. Uh, there's Fauci was quoted on saying that there are going to be some trials coming out just in the next few weeks, including the J&J &J mix and match studies. So hopefully that data will come out in the next few weeks and it'll give you some clearer guidance for you. You're just going to be in a gray area for a while and we'll just have to get, get used to this for more. Uh, unfortunately, we've had a little yeah, a year and a half of uncertainty, but that's just the way it is. So priorities, though, however, still get the get the unvaccinated vaccinated is still the most important thing we can do. Uh, wearing a good mask if you're in a high risk setting is a way you can protect yourself until there's better ideas. And I think the third consideration is the booster. And it, this needs to be kind of an individualized decision uh, focused on the first two. But yes, everybody's worried about number three. Uh, we just have to be patient on, on the data. You know, Johnson Johnson, if you go through the slides from the CDC, it's kind of interesting that the Johnson Johnson, instead of waning, it seems like the hospital projection seems to get better over time, which is kind of an interesting uh, finding. It may be that the sample sizes are just too low. There's not enough data yet. However, uh, that would give me some, uh, you know, some confidence that if I was in JJ, well, maybe there isn't such a big rush. Uh, at least there is most protection. This is better than the range of a flu shot protection, although it's not to the level you get for J&J &J and Moderna. So you can kind of use this to kind of make your decision about whether you should go ahead and get the Pfizer or Moderna RNA booster or not, or wait a few more weeks and see what the data shows. 
uh, I thought it was interesting. They actually showed the people, uh, uh, studies of people who have actually gone ahead and getting the third dose ahead of time without any official uh, 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 recommendation. Most of the people who got Moderna are sticking with Moderna and not getting one of the others. Most people who got Pfizer are sticking with the Pfizer and not getting one of the others. However, most of the people who got Janssen and Janssen are voting with their feet on either a Moderna or a Pfizer. So you can kind of use this and say, well, what is everybody else doing? I'm going to guess a lot of these people are health professionals and are fairly well informed in why they're making their decision. Uh, you can use that to guide your decision or you can kind of hang out and wait a few more weeks for those studies to come in. Um, you know, the hospitalizations, Moderna versus uh, Pfizer. The good news is if you had Pfizer, one well, you got a little later probably, but so the timing, uh, the delay is uh, with that six to eight month immunity may be longer. But for whatever reason, Moderna seems to be holding up a little bit better over time. Uh, so, the, so the juries may be still out. Maybe you don't need a third dose uh, with uh, Moderna, or maybe if you do need a third boost from Moderna, it'll be a smaller dose. Um, you know, if they pool the data, there does seem to be some waning of immunity greater than six months, but a lot of that was Pfizer, though, so uh, it still makes it overall kind of hard to interpret what to do. Um, well, you know, honest question I keep tell people, you know, but you should always ask someone to put their money where their mouth is. I had Moderna. What would Bob do? Uh, I thought about this for quite a while. The cons were, the, you know, the data is incomplete. The shot possibly is unnecessary for any hospitalizations. Uh, would a lower bo do bo do uh, booster dose have fewer side effects, for example? Uh, so maybe I should wait a little bit on the pro side of getting going ahead and get the get the Moderna. Um, there is some seems to be some loss of infection protection, and I'm not just getting you know, doing what I'm doing to protect me. I want to protect those around me. Uh, my father-in-law, who's with us a lot, uh, who would be higher risk. Uh, I've got a coworker who's got, uh, uh, who's immunosuppressed. Uh, I also just don't want to miss work for a week if I had to get, have a breakthrough infection. So is it worth getting it just to prevent that possibility? Uh, one is, uh, I have a really busy schedule. I'm not sure I could find time free in case of side effects. What if I've got a, a Saturday open? Maybe I'll go get it on a Friday. And then there's the travel safety requirements. I have a lot of travel coming up, and what if I'm going to go someplace where they they decide that three booster, three shots is what what it takes to be avoid quarantine? Uh, and so I sat there and weighed those decisions. And what did I do? Well, uh, I, I went ahead and got uh, the booster. Um, um, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was right. Uh, I did only have a slight headache the next day, um, and so I just took an ibuprofen, went and mowed lawn, mowed lawn, dug up potatoes, and I was fine. Uh, I skipped the slide previously, but I can't go back. But it basically it, you know, look at where you're traveling to. I have a number of business meetings, conferences, one I'm going to be a speaker at. Uh, I decided uh, I'll go ahead. Maybe I made the wrong decision. Maybe I didn't. Uh, time will tell. We'll find out. Uh, but for you making your own individual decision, I think, you know, look at your own situation. If you have, if you have a high risk condition, talk to your physician, primary care doctor about it. Um, you know, the side effects with Moderna, maybe I made the wrong decision, but you know, the side effects seem to be about the same for the most time with the third dose, but maybe if I'd waited for the 50 micrograms, my chances would have been better at a at lower side effects. Uh, we'll see what the studies come out uh, here in the next uh, few weeks or few months or so. Um, last thing I want to talk about though, not just the booster shot for COVID, but get a flu shot. And I would get it sometime in October and November. You know, one of the, the conspiracy theories out there is that, oh, this, all of these uh, COVID deaths, those were really just flu deaths or uh, misidentified. Uh, the, the number of deaths is just far beyond any past uh, flu season in, in record. Uh, basically, it's, we actually probably are getting the point of exceeding the 1917-18 flu epidemic, honestly. Here, graphically, is what a last bad flu season looked like. They had a few weeks where the uh, excess days, deaths in the United States were above what you might expect. And so this orange line is, is a number of deaths that are more than typical in, a, in, a, in, in that that type of season. Every winter deaths go up because of flu and pneumonia a little bit. This is a bad flu year. This is a bad pandemic multi-year. So every single week from, from March of 2020, we've had more deaths than expected going on 18 months now. And this is almost all COVID. Um, so look, and, and basically you had, and these, some of these peaks are hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, we're probably going to get another 100 to 200,000 deaths with this next peak uh, already. And so the number of deaths for COVID and flu just isn't even close. Uh, and this is data going back. The CDC has de de decades uh, of data going back looking at this type of stuff. So it's just rock solid. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, we're in sort of that, you know, no man's land for your booster shot, but uh, you know, think through it. Uh, like I said, like I think, and Walensky said, uh, it's not a huge rush. Uh, be patient. Although if you're in a high risk situation, then you might want to go ahead uh, based on your own individual risk, both your health and your work and what you do might guide you one way or the other. Uh, on the other hand, there's data going to be coming out in the next few weeks. So again, use the disclaimer. This is where I work and what I do. Hopefully this is helpful to you and I'll be back next week with another update.